Reddit. What is the strangest thing you have a guy for? I have a sloth guy. Three separate family events over the last 15 years, I've called my guy and he's brought a sloth to the party. Edited to reassure people, he runs a USDA certified wild animal rescue and has his sloth for close to 20 years. He takes extraordinary care for all of his animals. The sloth is not a performing animal. No one gets to approach it, handle it, or pet it. He simply brings it for short periods of time so that people can see it and he discusses its life, behavior, and care. He does phenomenal work to protect and preserve wildlife. Many of his animals came to him after being purchased by people who wanted an exotic pet and they quickly realized they could not care for. 2. I've got a pineapple guy. Gets me good stuff, various stuff, called the sugarloaf pineapple. White pineapple, Kana sugarloaf, Kana white, honey cream, etc. It's a pineapple that is sweeter and crucially has significantly lower acidity, so it doesn't hurt your mouth or tongue if you eat it too much. It's good to have a pineapple guy. Edit. For those of you asking me how to get your own pineapple guy, you gotta know a guy. And for those of you who DM'd asking how my guy gets his pineapples, I don't ask and he doesn't tell. That's the whole point of having a guy. I give him money and he gives me the pineapples. No questions asked. Edit 2. Yes, I'm seriously talking about pineapple fruit, not weed. And now that weed is legal, does anybody actually need a weed guy anymore? Number 3. When I was a waiter in downtown Phoenix 20 years ago, I had a street person on retainer. Parking was difficult for lunch shift. Our restaurant couldn't slash wouldn't validate employees parking, so we had to use the meters on the street. Since the meters had a two hour limit, you needed to park close enough to be able to run down and feed them in the middle of the lunch rush. Spaces were very limited. One day, soon after starting, I passed the same bum for the third night in a row panhandling. He wasn't at all vocal, just tried doing funny dances and making people smile. Then he'd tell you to have a nice night. Never asked outright for anything and was never rude or aggressive. I gave him a couple of bucks for a few nights in a row and started to notice him during the day too once we became familiar. The first time I saw him after pulling in for a lunch shift, I gave him a handful of change for my coin cup in the console and told him if he fed my meter with it all day, I'd throw him some cash again after my shift. Found out then that his name was Mike. Two hours later, it's noon 30 and the crew is dashing down to feed their meters or asking whomever is going down to get it for them. I gave someone a couple of quarters and asked them to check on mine while they were at it, just in case. They were back in five minutes later reporting that my car was good. The hostess car was good and the other two servers bookending my car were good. All of us until after 2 p.m. They said some homeless guy is feeding all the meters on the side of the block. The next day, as I was making my way around the gauntlet of one-way roads surrounding the building housing my restaurant, I saw Mike. He was standing in a parking space right by the bottom of the escalator leading to my work. And as soon as he saw my car, he pulled his pants leg up and did a little chorus line dance move to get my attention. He'd been standing there holding the spot for me for the past 15 minutes. Thus, it began. Mike held a parking spot for me nearly every morning for the next two years. He fed my meter and the meter off of any other staff I asked him to. I started keeping car cleaning stuff in my car, Windex, Armor All, and would give him towels for the restaurant to detail it up once a week. He knew what bar I hung out at and where I sat. He tracked me down when meters were close to expire or he needed a buck. Everybody at the restaurant and the bar across the street called him my bum. He was my friend too though. His name was Mike. He just didn't live anywhere because life is more complicated for some people. But yeah, I had a guy once. A true downtown concierge. 4. I've got a clam guy. He gets fresh clams in the morning then walks around town with a cooler on a cart and sells them door to door. I got him business cards for Christmas one year and he made me write clam master on them. He's a character. Edit. To add some more info, he does deliver door to door. He'll sometimes sell the majority of his haul to a seafood restaurant near me, but he'll usually hold back a few dozen for me. First time I met him, probably seven or eight years ago, he was sea carrying clams in a five gallon bucket walking my block. He asked if I wanted to buy some clams and I said yes and we've been friends ever since. He later started coming around with a big cooler on a cart and even mopped with a tiny trailer for a while. He doesn't deliver on demand, but he reliably comes by once or twice a week during clam season. Always fresh, caught that morning. 5. My side gig is being the car guy for a couple wealthy clients. I can do anything with cars. Always wanted a particular car, I'll find and deliver it to your driveway. For my uncle's 50th birthday, I found the 1967 electric blue Pontiac GTO he always wanted. Not a 1967 Pontiac GTO, the one he wanted that belonged to his best friend's dad when he was a kid. The exact car. I never stored it personally and gave it to him as a gift. If you have a few cars and just want them to be cleaned and maintained normally, I got it. You want a custom hot rod race car dune buggy? Hit me up. 
Want to sell a car? I got you. I can be a mechanic, detailer, broker, builder, body shop, painter, and I'll even come right to your freaking house and do it. It's not a real business or anything, just something I do for a couple of people who don't mind paying from time to time. I want to be this guy's friend. Can I afford any of the cars he's providing? No, but just even in conversation, you're like, yeah, I know a car guy. Oh yeah, Jeff, he could get you that, but he'll never get it for any of us because we can't afford what he's offering, but it's cool. Anyway, let's continue. Number six, I worked in restaurants for years. I learned that Hispanic communities really do have a guy for everything, at least where I live. There's a car repair guy they all go to, a tax guy, etc. Well, my buddy Felipe introduced me to the tamale guy, and I go see him almost weekly ever since I was introduced. You just drop by his house and go in the kitchen door in the back, and he's in there like six days a week. Freaking rad. I have to add, I have a Hispanic friend who lives in California, and he also has a tamale guy, and this is exactly how it works for him. It's a tamale lady. She's this sweet old grandma, and whenever he needs something, he's like, hola, can I have some tamales, por favor? And she's like, I see you. Uno momento, por favor. And then you come back in a day, and she's got a whole bunch of tamales. I love it. I don't have any guys or girls. I don't know cool people. Anyway, let's continue. Number seven. I got a guy named Fat Tony who occasionally texts me about rare but cheap musical instruments. He's always trying to loop me in on his side hustle of finding instruments on eBay and repairing them for resale. One day, I got a text that says, Yo, Lazy Clock 7316, this is Fat Tony. I got a Hammond organ for you, 100 bucks. And that's how I got my organ. I still have no idea how he got my number or who he really is. We've never met in person. Fat Tony. Number eight, I have a guy who will diagnose my weird ailments, even if he's planting pumpkins or cleaning out a chicken coop or nursing injured birds back to health. I've even sent him pictures at 4 a.m. of the horrible conjunctivitis that I developed over a 12 hour period. And by 8.30 a.m., he delivered a prescription of antibiotic eye drops to my house. Number nine, I've got a serious egg guy. It's a 14 year old kid that lives just outside of my city. His dad wanted to teach him about budgets and business, so he bought him a few chickens and the kid used his allowance to buy food and a chicken coop. Now he has to take care of them, pay for feed, and collect and sell eggs for profit that goes back into upkeep and food. And he's making a killing selling below market value. $2 a dozen for farm fresh eggs. He sells to his entire school and church. He's grown his operation to be massive and has hired on a couple of friends part time to help. Did I say he's 14 years old? Number 10. I have a pig guy. Years ago, my friend hand-built a large smoker big enough to fit a whole 100 to 125-pound pig inside. Once or twice a year, we team up and do an all-day pig roast for our friends and family. It's super fun. Over the years, I've made a reliable connection from a local pig farmer who will sell me a fresh cleaned pig carcass and we cook it up. Number 11. Oh my god, it's finally my time. This isn't my guy, but still relevant. I am a teacher. When I was doing my student teaching, it was at school with a very high socioeconomic student body, and I just could not relate to them. One day, a kid comes in all upset, and I thought, oh, a chance to connect, and I asked him what was wrong. He replied that his dog just wouldn't stop barking, and it was ruining his life. I was like, okay, but still wanted to connect, and so I was like, oh, that sucks. My dog is really old and has a bad back. He immediately sniffed and wiped the little tears from his eyes and said, hang on, I've got a guy pulled out his $300 Prada wallet from his back pocket and handed me a card. He said with the most serious look on his face that this was, quote, the best doggy masseuse in the business, as if A, there was more than one guy in that field, and B, it wasn't his parents that employed this man, but the fifth grader himself. I just said thank you so much and walked away flabbergasted. Number 12. Oddly enough, Yakitori. I have a buddy I met years back who just loves making yakitori. He's actually taken gigs at bars where he'll just set up a yakitori grill in the back and start cooking. It's nice, simple, straightforward, and quite cheap. The guy just loves manning the grill, and I can message him pretty much out of the blue, ask where he's at, and get some yummy chicken skewers. I love yakitori guy. Number 13. Not anymore, but between 10 and 15 years ago, I had a guy who used me as a cannabis tester. He was this grizzled old gangster that grew weed, extracted various octanes of oil, and used my oven to render hashish. He is hands down the wildest dude I've ever known. 
picture Mike Ehrmantraut from Breaking Bad, down to the Chrysler sedan. His was powder blue, and he had nothing but gangster rap woofing out of his speakers, but missing an eye and several teeth, which he eventually got dentures for. He used to come into my pool hall, and I always treated him kindly and with respect, while my co-workers sort of wrote him off as a tumbleweed. One day, I clocked out and started shooting a few racks with him, and before long, asked if I smoked herb. Not that Mexi swag, he clarified. That stuff wasn't worth the time it took to roll. The good stuff. Sure, come with me then. We went out to the parking lot and smoked a doobie the size of my pinky. Then he gave me a couple more doobies just as a big and told me that there were two different strains he was cultivating. He wanted my opinion about their relative quality. For the next four years, he would call me up to shoot pool or just to drop by my house to hang out and showcase his newest strain. He gave me more chronic than I knew what to do with. He would break off a gram of hash and instruct me to report back to him about the quality. He brought over honey, amber, and crude oil for me to sample. I have rarely experienced the cannabis high like I derived from smoking the honey oil. At one point, his oven was on the fritz, so he brought over an ounce of trichome keef and demonstrated his method for rendering hard green hashish. Dude was a total looney tune. He told me the craziest stories about all the nefarious dirt he had been deeply involved in until the watershed moment where he got shot in the head for the second time. Losing an eye seems to have been a turning point where he decided that burglarizing houses and exchanging the loot for fist-sized crack rocks of cocaine in Kansas City hoods where no other white man could enter without approval from the OGs was not a lifestyle worth maintaining. He had me come prune buds at one point, paying me an ounce per pound, but I quit after one shift because that is some tedious carpal tunnel stuff, and I couldn't stand his idiotic pillhead girlfriend. Number 14. I had a house guy for a while. Dave. He was a contractor, but kind of small time. Rebuild a deck? Sure. Replace the fences around the backyard? He's ready. The front yard? Sure. Completely reside the house? Absolutely. And at a great price. Build an outbuilding attached to the house for our cat's litter boxes? He even did a redwood door. We bought our new house, and at about 30 years, it had its midlife crisis when a whole lot of stuff needed replacing. Dave saw us through that. He doesn't do roofs, but he's got us in with his buddy, the legendary good and cheap roofer who doesn't answer phones too well. Dave wasn't cut out to be a businessman, so he went to work for another contractor as a sort of job boss on custom houses. But we still call Dave whenever we need something done, because he'll refer us to one of the young guys who works for him, who's good and cheap and wants side work. Dave rules. Number 15. I've accidentally become the plant witch gnome lady. I like plants in gardening and have a pretty green thumb. I also made some little decorative gnomes at one point. Both things friends have noticed and it snowballed from there. They tell people who tell people and suddenly I have total strangers texting me like, my plant is dying, please help. This one lady in my apartment complex calls me Professor Sprout. I low-key kind of love that. Hufflepuff pride, BTW. And I've had not one, but two people I barely know see the wizard gnome on my shelf and go, OMG, did you make that? Could I pay you to make me one? So now I spontaneously get some gnome commissions. Totally didn't mean to do either, but people talk and apparently houseplant witchery and cute gnomes are both hard to come by in the area. Number 16. Not anything special like mushrooms or fancy pineapples, but I have a little Asian grandma who runs a very small gas station in the town I work in. I literally plan how much gas I'm spending so I can always stop by his store and say hi. I have to pay inside, so whenever I walk in to give my card, he throws his hands in the air with a big smile and says, My girl is back! How is work? And we chat for a few minutes, and I buy one of those poke stick packs as a snack for the drive home, and then he goes, Okay, be good, see you next week, and drive safe, with the sweetest smile. It's not much, but I look forward to seeing him every week. Editing almost a month later to add, he just retired. They sold their shop to a lovely lady who I already became friends with. Chen left her a samurai sword for her protection since she'll be working nights by herself. I ended up staying an extra 30 minutes with the new lady because there were some sketchy guys in the store and neither of us wanted to stand alone at the register slash at the gas pump. So now we're buds too and I suggest she got a shop dog to keep her company in the evenings. Number 17. I have a scale guy for weighing things. A maple syrup guy. He brings it over the border in his car from his farm in Canada. A compost guy a honey lady, and a baseball glove repair guy. That's actually me. I restore them and customize, and I'm freaking good at it too. Number 18. I work as a consultant, and a big part of my job is working across a large number of industries and working hard to maintain those relationships. And as a result, I have a number of guys. Need something 3D printed in a hurry up to the size of a small car? 
got the guy. Need a couple of hundred of tones of gravel in a hurry? It'll just take a call. Need to influence the outcome of a decision with the respect to a planning consent? Which council? I've got three. Need a building to go bye-bye? I got a demolition guy. Then we have the fun ones from a slightly more rough crowd I hung around a number of years ago. Need three pounds of pot? It will take an hour. Need $100,000 laundered out of the country? Yep. Need a car to disappear whilst you claim the insurance and then have it reappear after the no-fault period has passed? Let me make a call and I'll just tell you where to leave it with $500 in the glove box. I know some interesting fellows. I've got a teeth guy. His name is Kyle. He collects human teeth. He is not a dentist. No one in his family is a dentist, and they're in a jar. They're real. They're not his own. We don't know why Kyle collects teeth. We don't even know where Kyle obtained the teeth. It's a lot of teeth. We try to avoid Kyle. However, he is absolutely my favorite threat to use. I know someone who wants your teeth more than you. His name is Kyle. Number 20. Any and everything cell or gene therapy related. I'm a salesman, not a freaking scientist, but I talk to scientists all day to help them with their staffing issues. Sometimes I can fake my way through it and not put my foot in my mouth and get all the info I need to have someone recruit for the position. But sometimes they call me out and I need to call in Jerry to talk shop with them. I pay him a few hundred bucks to make me sound credible and get the info we need and then talk to me in layman's terms about it so I understand what we are looking for. Number 21. I had a friend in college that was the you won't believe this actually happened to me but it really did story guy. He rarely ever told the same story more than once and everything he said was verifiable. I miss him because he was a cool lovable dude but also because hearing his stories I doubt any of that would ever actually happen to me or anyone I know or that I would meet someone like that again. Number Number 22. I have a short shorts guy, as in classic short as hell split shorts for distance running. There are all kinds of awesome patterned classic light split shorts still being made, but the main company that does so, BOA, has never bothered to put them online. So they send catalogs of short patterns along with a bunch of other stuff to vendors and shoe stores who will then select their inventory from the catalogs of various companies. So as a random runner, I can't order or even see the shorts from BOA and I can't find them in physical stores since most guys don't feel comfortable in shorts anymore. But I can ask my shorts guy for his catalog, make my selections, and he'll order just those shorts and hold them for me. So I have a shorts guy. Number 23. I have an exotic animal doctor. Is your bird humping your feet? Does your frog have a prolapsed anus? Has your lizard's member been erect for more than four hours? Does your parrot need birth control? He can treat it and do surgery. He sees normal stuff too, but the above examples were some of the funnier recent stuff. Number 24. I used to have a Panera Bread soup guy. He was a friend, but he would let me know when his cool manager was working. I'd pull up behind the strip mall and he'd toss a frozen bag of broccoli cheddar in my basket. And it was the same sized bags they got sent from the factory. Thing weighed like 10 pounds for 10 bucks. Now I pay like $10 for a cup of it. I just have to tell you all something very important. Panera Bread soup is awesome. Anyway, let's continue. Number 25. During the lockdown, there was a Brazilian dude who started selling something like meat pies. He called it pastel. It's a Brazilian thing, I guess. And an assortment of fried pies. Dude claimed he was an employee from a restaurant who was laid off. His wife made the pies. She previously made them for the restaurant. And he went and sold them in the big park I have near my house. We were in lockdown, but people went to the park to run, walk the dogs, stuff like that, etc. It always felt a bit sketchy to me, buying food from a random dude on a street, selling it from a see-through box. But sure enough, the dude started selling, and whoever bought became repeat customers. Dude always dressed up as a waiter, uniform in pristine condition, in what I imagine was his work clothes at the said restaurant. One day, I'm walking my dog, dreading the idea that I have to go shopping. Lines for the supermarket were enormous. Since I had no food in the house, I see him in the distance. I haven't eaten lunch yet, so I say screw it, and bought a pastel and a chicken pie. He became my pastel guy, and sure enough, I became yet another repeat customer. Those pasteles were the bomb. Shortly after the lockdown ended, pastel guy disappeared, and I miss him dearly. Number 26. I work at a VFW. For those of you who don't know, the VFW is a place for veterans, among others, but mostly vets, to gather and drink. There's also an auxiliary which puts together some events like fish fries. Sometimes I'll cook up a baked chicken for someone on Fish Fridays. Now when I tell you the pan I bake these things in gets hot, I mean blistering hot. Brand new oven mitts aren't a match for this. It is so hot, 
Anyway, there's this guy, Marine, that was working in the Scully overflow kitchen, doing dishes and whatnot. At the end of the night, the dude asks me if there's any dishes that needs washing. I'm like, yeah, these baked chicken pans, but use an oven mitt. They're hotter than my ex. She wasn't that hot, but he didn't need to know that. The point is, I tried to get him to use an oven mitt. What does this guy freaking do? He bare hands the pan. Gotta be at least 350 degrees and walks it to the scullery. Not even a flinch. I turned to my coworker and said, did you just see that? I can't believe what I just saw. Now, I don't know all of the stuff that happens in marine life, but from the marines I do know, most of them would put on the damn oven mitt. I don't want to know how this guy is able to handle that. But if I need something done, I think that guy can get just about anything done.